Hi, welcome. I'm just going to be doing a short overview tarot spread to see where everybody's at right now. Um, it, it's not going to be in depth like my monthly and mid monthlies are. It's just a little, a little success spread to see you know where we're currently at. And thank you so much for joining me. My name is Serafina Safi, and I present Enchanted Mirror Tarot. Uh, so let's start. We're going to do all of the fire signs together. So this is going to be Aries, Sagittarius, and Leo. Uh, so let's start with Aries. Okay. So what does uh, Aries have on their mind? What does Aries have on their mind? Okay, so I have the Knight of Wands. So you have conquest on your mind. Uh, the Knight of Wands, it came in the upright. This is your energy. This is Aries energy. And the Knight of Wands conquers things. That's what he does. Um, he acts on ideas. He's highly action-oriented. It's sudden arrivals, great new opportunities. Um, but it can mean unfinished product. Uh, projects, being a risk taker, being a flirt, being a ladies man, being a charmer, a real charmer, uh, being passionate, fun, uh, energetic, taking up sports, um, getting some exercise, But mostly, the, this card loves to flirt. So this is all about, all about flirting, meeting new people. What doesn't Aries want to think about? What doesn't Aries want to think about? Okay. So this is fair. This is a water card. Uh, this is the Eight of Cups in the reverse. So when the Eight of Cups reverses, this is um, walking away from things. This is a Pisces. This is aimless drifting So you and being hopeless. This is hopelessness. So you don't want to think about walking away. You don't want to think about not having any type of direction. You want to be able to know where you're going. You don't want to have just aimless drifting. Um, and you don't want to think about walking away from things that don't serve you. You don't want, Pisces is a very psychic and nostalgic sign. So you don't want to think about the past. You don't want to think about um, following your inner voice. You don't want to think about being vulnerable at all. You don't want to think about being um, compassionate. You don't want to think about addictions. You don't want to think about... Um, sentimentality okay what past in what's past influences this current situation what past influences okay so I have the four of Pentacles in the reverse um, there was greed materialism in the past this is the card of Capricorn uh, this is I achieve this is all about ambition um, being disciplined, hardworking, organized, practical. What else in the past is affecting? Okay, so I see a Pisces here. Uh, there was a Pisces in your past. I have the High Priestess and I have the World. So I have two major Arcana cards side by side. The High Priestess is number two and the World Ends Things. So the High Priestess um, is the card of Pisces and it's the subconscious. It's a higher self, deep feelings, understanding, intuition, <coughs> excuse me, being withdrawn, time alone, um, following your own path, your inner wisdom, there's secrets here, there's a need to go deeper for answers, not everything is obvious at first glance, uh, the formation of plans and ideas, 
a time of retreat and reflecting. And then the world finishes the major arcana. It's all about lasting success. And it's actually ruled by Saturn. And Capricorn is ru ruled by Saturn. So we got Capricorn here at first. So we have Pisces and Capricorn um, as a theme. Okay, so this is lasting success um, cycles. There's an ending here. Um, there's awards, promotion, graduation. So coming full circle, whenever you think of the world, think of starting school as a kindergartner and you go all 12 grades and now you've hit the graduation date. That's what the world is. It's graduating to a higher level of consciousness. What's presently affecting Aries? What's presently affecting Aries? Right, so there could be court cases, legal matters. Um, I have justice. There could be a Libra involved. Uh, this is another major life event. Um, but this says that you're exactly where you deserve to be. Um, balance skills, there's home establishment here, uh, there's judges, lawyers, there's total honesty. Libra's eye balance, it's a very diplomatic energy, it's very peaceful, romantic, fair, partner oriented, um, communicative, it's the winds of change, things are changing, uh, Libra brings in change. Libra does something about it. He, Libra doesn't just sit back and let things happen to them. They, they do something about it. Um, they appreciate arts and fine things. And that's where you presently are standing, just in this very diplomatic, peaceful, balanced state of mind. Right, what could be happening to Aries in the new, near future? All right, so I have the lovers reversed. So in the near future, there could be a Gemini coming your way, but there's communication breakdowns, there's wrong messages being sent, there's infidelity, uh, using sex as a weapon, uh, jealousy, possessiveness, divorce, separation, low self-esteem, lack of self-love, disagreements. It's just not the right time to move forward or make any changes. What else is going uh, to happen to Aries in the near future? All right, so this is just the near future. So I have the two of cups in the reverse. Um, so there's a breakup, uh, an imbalance. There's a lack of harmony. This is the card of cancer. So it could be happening between July or June 21st through July 22nd. There's a breakup. Uh, there's the Page of Wands in the reverse, and we're back into this fire energy. Um, the Page of Wands, when he reverses, he makes a lot of excuses. He's never ready for anything. Um, he fears change. He's, he fears travel. There's a lack of ambition. There's a delay. There's obstacles. Um, there's being very reckless and foolish, taking foolish risks. He's terribly unreliable. He has a tendency to wonder and the grass is all, he always sees the grass is greener on the other side. And then it ends with the two of swords. So there's, um, Difficult choices here that you have to make. Again, we're in this Libra energy. Um, not thinking clearly. Turning a blind eye to things that are right in front of you. <sighs> okay. Um, so... Why is the lovers reversed here for Aries' future? Okay. So I have the Nine of Cups. It's wishes fulfilled. Um, there's smugness here. 
there could be hosting a, pro a party, showing off. Uh, this again is the card of Pisces. So there's Pisces and Gemini here. And uh, there's a break in communication. There's misunderstandings um, because of smugness, because of a party, because of, of uh, showing off. Why is the Two of Cups reversed here for Aries future? Why is the Two? Okay. All right, I got the Nine of Cups again. Uh, I have two decks put together and it's in the upright. So we have the Nine of Cups again. Uh, so we got this twice in a row. This again is the card of Pisces. Uh, this is from the Morgan Greer deck and the first one was from the regular Rider Wade deck. Um, so again, there's a break in communication because of showing off, because of being smug, because of, um, it, this can actually be alcoholism and drinking as well. Um, but I'm definitely seeing massive Pisces energy here for you, Aries. Uh, Capricorn, Libra, and Pisces keep coming out. And then I have your energy, Aries energy. Why is the Page of Wands in reverse here? Why is the pain? So there's there's um like a break in communication, a breakup because of drinking, smugness, uh, showing off. Okay, so we have the Queen of Cups, and then the King of Cups actually came up on the other side. So I have the King and Queen of Cups here. So the Page of Wands is here because of the King and Queen of Cups. And then one's more angrier, one is uh, right or weight. So the King of Cups in the upright, he is deep wisdom. He's calm, he's caring, he's loving, he's friendly, he, he disciplines his emotions. He's affectionate, he's a counselor, he's a doctor, he's a ladies man. Um, he dresses really nice. Uh, he takes care of his appearance. He takes care of himself. He takes care of his loved ones. He is an authority figure. He's mature. He's in full control of his m emotions and actions, and he develops ideas. Um, the Queen of Cups in reverse is highly manipulative. Uh, she... She's gullible. Um, she's a fashion victim. She doesn't dress very nice. She's very clingy, moody, uh, a heartbreaker, uh, gloom and doom. Like she never sees the bright side. She's always gloom and doom. She's escapism. She's cold. She's shallow. She's blocked or repressed artistic abilities and emotions. And either one of the, they, it doesn't have, like the King of Cups can be talking about a woman and the Queen of Cups can be talking about a man. They're not gender specific. Uh, but again, we have Pisces here. We have Pisces and Cancer energy. All right, why is the Two of Swords here for Aries future? Why is, oh, oh, all right, all right, all right. Hold on, I gotcha. And this one came out too. All right, so we have the five, six, seven, eight of eight of pentacles and the eight of swords. So we have two eights here. Do we have eights anywhere else? We have a four. Yeah. Yeah, we're getting a lot of fours and eights here. Two, four, and eight. Two, four, and eight. Um, so what does that numerology mean? So twos are all about balance, they're about choices, they're about decisions. Uh, fours are about stability, structure, strong foundations, and eights are about change, movement, action. So the winds of change are here. Um, they're ushering in a new beginning and you're building a strong foundation and you have many choices that you have to make and some of them are very difficult. 
Um, so you have a lot of very difficult choices, but they have to be made in order to, for you to build that solid, strong foundation in order to grow. Um, but yeah, the winds of change are definitely here. So we have the Eight of Swords in the upright, and that's about frustration, bad attitudes, being paralyzed by fear, not being able to see a way out, uh, backed in a corner, feeling victimized, trapped, isolated, ignoring advice. We have the card of Gemini here again, and then we have the five, six, eight, I'm sorry, I just said oops twice. All right. Um, of Roman numerals, they just, I, I get, I'm not very good with Roman numerals. Um, so the Eight of Pentacles is um, perfectionism. There is a lack of ambition or focus, and this is actually Virgo energy. And there's a lot of, a lot of conflict here because Virgo is an earth energy. Pentacles are also an earth energy. And earth energy hates change. Think about earth. It wants to stay solid and it wants things to grow out of it. It doesn't like to move. Um, you can count on earth. It's always there. It's stable. It's solid. Um, it's routine. And you can build upon earth. Air is the winds of change. You can't contain air. Air just likes to flow in and out, flow in and out. Um, air is all about communication because our communication goes through the air. So we have air and we have earth energy here. Um, so there's massive conflict. And there's conflict here with the page of wands because water and fire don't mix either. So I see conflict. I see a lot of conflict in your future. But it's necessary. You're, you're, you have the wish card twice. So whatever you wish for will come true. However, I see that there is a breakup and there is a lack of communication. Um, there is disharmony within your relationship because of smugness, because of showing off. So be careful of that. You can change this. Um, the future is fluid and you can definitely change the future. And that's why you get a tarot reading. So Aries, that's what um, I got for you. Thank you so much for joining me today. And now we're going to go on to Leo. Hi Leo. I love my Leos. Welcome to your uh, little bonus short spread. Um, the first thing that I would like to know is what do Leos have on their mind? What do Leos have on their mind currently? Okay, so the Wheel of Fortune, you have karma on your mind. Uh, you may have a Sagittarius on your mind with this card as well, or just that Sagittarius energy of traveling. So you could have traveling on your mind. Um, the Wheel of Fortune is um, good fortune, growth, timing, unexpected rewards. What does Leo not want to think about? What does Leo not want to think about? All right, so I have the Page of Cups, and he's in the reverse. Um, so you don't want to think about a heartbreaker. You don't want to think about a womanizer. You don't want to think about a user, a flirt, a lust, um, someone who's sulky, moody, emotionally insecure, manipulative, um, upset, throws tantrums. You don't want to think about sex, drug, alcohol abuse. You don't want to think about narcissism. You don't want to think about uh, taboo topics. All right, what's presently affecting Leo? What's presently affecting Leo? All right, so we have Taurus energy here. Um, so this is Earth energy. There's no change. Uh, just building, building an empire, um, being sent your way, being someone that you can count on, 
um, being stubborn, uh, being patient, being steady, solid, domestic, um, being traditional, <clears throat> legacy, um, doing what everyone's expected of you, being stuck in the past, of being afraid of rocking the boat, um, surrendering to free will, externalizing your internal power. What past influences um, are infecting Leah's present? Okay, so I have the three of wands in the reverse. So there's a lack of foresight. There's obstacles to long-term goals. There's Aries here. Um, so there's being egotistical, being demanding. I have the Knight of Pentacles, so it was something in the past was moving very, very slowly. Um, this is a time to put plans into action. Um, there's no fast way out. Building an empire, um, working on yourself, getting rest. Again, this is Taurus energy. And the Three of Pentacles is Aries. So we have um, Taurus energy moving slow, being stuck in the past, but looking towards the future, um, but still heading like towards the past, towards everything that that was in the past. And I, there's a lot of green here. So green to me is health, wealth. Um, so we could be talking about money. We could be talking about health issues here. Um, the three of wands is not facing things they're turned away and um there there's there's no new growth here growth is stagnant there's stagnation and now this tradition this legacy um this energy of either health or wealth is looking towards the future and moving towards the future and it's something that isn't um anything out of the normal. It's just very traditional, a, a very um, leg legacy. All right, so in the future, I see we have the Ace of Swords in the reverse. There's confusion, chaos. There's a lack of clarity. This is going to happen in the future. Oh, I don't want all that. Ugh. Make sure I get them the right way. Okay. So it gave me like a bunch of stuff. All right. The first thing is the, the chain. Okay. So it doesn't want me to have this card. All right. So you're not supposed to be. Okay. So the three of cups in the reverse. There's an affair. Three is a crowd. Stifled creativity. There, that's the card of cancer. So we could be talking about something that's happening June 21st through July 22nd. We have the sun in reverse. So when the sun reverses, um, there's worries, there's doubts, there's blocks, um, denying things, um, relationships are getting cold, bragging, um, sunburns, tantrums. So be careful of sunburns here. And then we have death in the upright. So uh, this is the card of Scorpio. This is change. This is transformation. This is rebirth. Out with the old and with the new. Um, fear of the unknown. Accepting change. A new chapter in your life. The old one's ending. Accepting things and releasing. So why is the Ace of Swords here for Leo's future? All right, so I have the Six of Pentacles. Uh, so the Six of Pentacles is about charity, um, hiring, firing, um, getting back on your feet, payday, inheritance, rags to riches. Again, we have Taurus energy and there's a lot of conflict here. Uh, between the chaos and confusion and the getting back on your feet, um, getting paid, uh, getting rescued, 
they, there's a there's a lot of a lot of conflict there. Why is the three of cups here? Why is the three of cups here? Okay, so I have the seven of swords in the reverse. So this is challenges and breaking habits. Uh, so I'm seeing this more as like stifled creativity or it could be an affair but the reason is the habits um it could be an affair because you're with a man that you, you it's the same type of man that you're constantly with or woman that you're constantly with um the personality type is very similar to exes and they're like lying deceitful sneaky they betray you um and it's all about habit you're you're with them because of habit or it could just be stifled creativity and it's because of habits that you have that are stifling your creativity like you could be a fast food addict like i am <laughs> and uh that's stifling your creativity why is the sun reversed here for leo all right, so I have the five of wands, conflict, challenges, um, when it all costs. There could be abuse here, um, gloating, physical attacks, a no-win situation. Why is death here for Leo? All right, so I have the ten of pentacles. This is a card of completions. Um, there's long-term financial security here their success, extreme wealth, the best of everything, um, long stand, standing family businesses, inheritance, um, fear of gambling, uh, lack, luck is on your side, marrying into money, uh, tradition, relationship, uh, taking care of an elderly parent, uh, this is Virgo energy, so it's very critical. It's very helpful, very um, service-oriented, very um, detailed. Uh, it's a perfectionist energy. And Scorpio is very passionate, very intense, very emotional, all-or-nothing type. And there's not a lot of conflict there because those two elements actually go together very well. Um, Scorpio is water, so it's emotional, it's intuitive, and um, the Ten of Pentacles, Pentacles are all about Earth, practical, grounded, dependable, doesn't take risks. Um, so they go together really well. The, the Sun is fire, and the Five of Wands is fire, so those go together really well. There's not a lot of conflict there at all. Uh, the Three of Cups and the Seven of Swords, they're just neutral energies, they don't really conflicts so I'm not seeing a whole lot of conflict here just regular day-to-day -day, you know battles um, but there's not a whole lot of conflict here in the future it starts out that there's a lot of conflict with the ace of swords and the six of pentacles there's conflict but it gets better and better and better and I see good things coming for you in the future um, but there are, are going to be challenges there are going to be obstacles um, it, the death card, it's telling me that you need to just cut whoever is cheating on you and lying to you and deceiving you off. Just get them out of your life, cut them off, they're dead to you, move on. Um, and then, you know, that's going to cause the sun in reverse and the five of wands. That's going to cause like a little battle, uh, but it's not like a big one. It's just that that regular explosive temperamental fire energy. It's it's a good fight. This is a good fight. This is not a bad fight. This is a good fight. So there's a good fight here. And I see that you ultimately do. And what you end up with is happiness. You end up with financial security. You end up with marrying someone who has who has money. You end up with stability here. So once you cut that shit out, it turns it turns really, really good. Well, thank you so much, Leo. And now we're going to move on to Sagittarius. Hi, Sagittarius. Welcome. Welcome. We're going to do just a mini spread. It's not going to be as in detail as my monthlies are. Uh, this is just a little 
something extra. Uh, so what what is on Sagittarius's mind? What is on Sagittarius? Okay. The Nine of Cups in reverse. So greed, materialism. There could be a Pisces here. Um, going out to bars, drinking, getting drunk. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, going out to bars, getting drunk, partying, socializing um, too much to the point that it's affecting your life. Um, drugs, alcohol, addictions, um, alcoholism. Right. What does Sagittarius not want to think about? What does Sagittarius not want to think about? Okay, so you don't want to think about coming out a financial loss. You don't want to think about um, recovering from financial loss. You don't want to think about anything practical. You don't want to think about anything grounded. You want to be more emotional because um, the Nine of Cups is Pisces energy. It's water energy, so it's very emotional energy. It's all about um, being a dreamer, being a fantasizer, being... Um, uh, being a daydreamer and the five of pentacles is all about being patient practical grounded not taking risks so you, so you don't want to think about that you don't want to think about um, putting plans into actions you don't want to think about uh, change um, like not changing being stagnant you don't want to think about building anything right now you just want to think about partying, um, having fun, getting drunk, uh, socializing. Okay, what's presently affecting Sagittarius? What's, what's presently affecting Sagittarius? What's presently affecting Sagittarius? Okay. So I have two cards here. And they're both, okay. Three cards. And this is from a completely different deck. All right, so presently, um, we have the Wheel of Fortune in reverse. And this is Sagittarius energy. Um, I always see that as Sagittarius energy. So this is uh, karma that's coming back to you. It could be bad luck, challenges, delays, um, setbacks. The past is haunting you here. I have the Hierophant reversed, so there's breaking rules, rejecting the orthodox ways, thinking for yourself, um, living by your own rules, uh, changing religions, a new belief system, it could be an unconventional relationship, dropping out of school, being extremely judgmental, hypocritical, and this is Taurus energy, so we have Taurus energy here twice. This is, I have, look at what I have. Being very stubborn, bullheaded, possessive, jealous. So those are the negative qualities of Taurus because the hair falls in reverse. So whenever it's in reverse, we talk about whatever is negative. So not all Tauruses are like that. That's just the negative qualities of Taurus. And then we have the six of pentacles in the upright. Um, so the Six of Pentacles in the Upright is about charity, um, giving and getting help, getting back on your feet, payday, inheritance, um, a rescue. And it looks like you're stuck in the past. You're just completely stuck in the past here. You're not present at all. Right. What in the past is affecting Sagittarius? Okay, so I have the world reversed. So this is carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders. There's a lack of closure. You're holding on to something. Um, th your world was turned upside down in the past, and you're just not over it. Um, there's being very vulnerable, um, being overly concerned with your appearance, unable to move on, being stagnant. What's going to happen in Sagittarius's near future? What's going to happen in Sagittarius's near, near future? Okay. 
Wow, this is really good. I see a lot of Pisces and Gemini energy here. So the first we have the Ten of Cups. So this is the happy family. This is completions. This is joy, happiness, marriage, the fairy tale, family blessings, domestic bliss, um, being emotionally fulfilled. This is the card of Pisces. And then we have the High Priestess, which is also the card of Pisces. This is a major arcana card. Um, this is the subconscious, the higher self. There's deep feelings here. Um, space, time alone, taking time alone, following your own path. Um, soul searching, um, going deeper for answers. Not everything is obvious at first glance. Um, it's not a time for action. It's a time to <coughs> retreat and reflect. Um, the High Priestess stands between two pillars. One is marked B and one is marked J. That stands for Boaz and Hakeem. In English, that translates to strength and unity. So there's strength and unity here. There is um, pomegranates, which re rep represent fertility and abundance. And she stands upon the moon, which means that she has full control of her emotions. And she holds the Torah in her hand, which holds the secrets of the subconscious mind. And she's in full control of her subconscious mind and her emotions. And she is full of strength and unity and abundance and fertility. And the ability to manifest. So we have double Pisces there. And then we have Gemini here. So we have the Queen of Swords in the upright. Um, so the Queen of Swords in the upright is a boss. Um, but she's very intelligent. She's an ice queen. Um, she's sharp. She's honest, tactful. She has clarity of thought. She's a problem solver, an organizer. Uh, she's Libra. She's very diplomatic. She's peaceful. She's romantic. She's adaptable. She's the winds of change. She's intelligent. She's a good task manager. Um, she's she takes feelings into consideration, but does what she what ultimately is best whenever she makes decisions. Um, she's always fair in every decision. She's very upfront. Um, she's her motto is "Be free, be single, be independent." Uh, she tells you like she sees it, and that's what's coming in the future. So why is the Ten of Cups here for Sagittarius in the future? Okay, so I have the Page of Swords in the upright. Uh, so the Page of Swords has his head in the cloud. He daydreams a lot. <clears throat> uh, there's a lot to think about. Um, he's forming a workable plan. He writes down his thoughts. He balances ideas. Um, he has freedom of speech. He's diplomatic. He's fair. He teaches. He's communication. Why is the High Priestess here for Sagittarius? Why is the High Priestess? Oh, the High Priestess again. <laughs> so to, to clarify why the High Priestess is here, it's the High Priestess again. So everything that I just said about the High Priestess is that again. So so you could have a Pisces coming in your future, um, and there's a lot of strength, unity, there's nostalgia, there is um, escaping by fantasy here, there's daydreams, there's an absolute fairy tale. So good things are coming in for you, Sagittarius. All right, and why is the Queen of Swords here? Why is the Queen of Swords here? Okay, so I have the Five of Pentacles. Um, so there's financial loss, uh, there's scandal, um, asking for help, being out in the cold, loneliness, um, letting money define you, being a social outcast, being a single parent. Again, we have this Taurus energy. So this is all about Taurus and Pisces. That's So <clears throat> Taurus and Pisces make 
the best couple out of the entire zodiac. Um, so this is all about a relationship because you can't get better than Taurus and Pisces. So this is a really good, compatible relationship. Um, <clears throat> I do see completions here, and the completions are something with the past, not with the future. And I see good things coming in the future, um, but you really don't want to think about building. You really don't want to think about marriage right now. You just want to party and have fun, but it's coming it's it's coming here it's um very dreamy very i would say this would be soulmate soulmate twin flame material uh that's coming your finances look good you have enough that you're actually able to give There's a lot of communication here. There's a happy family. There's being in control of yourself, your emotions, saying what you want. And <clears throat> you see this five of pentacles, even though there's financial loss here, um, they're together. That's a couple that sticks together through thick and thin. So even if they lose money, even if they have nothing, they stay together. They are a very good couple. And it could be with a Libra. Um, so you could be, we could be talking about Libra here. I have a Taurus, Pisces, Libra. Real strong. But Libra is like the perfect match for Sagittarius. So we could definitely be talking about Libra here. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Sagittarius. Uh, have a wonderful day.